Tell me who's that right down the river later? Who's that right down the river later? Who's that right down the river later? Wrote the book of the seven seals. No, God walked out in the cool of the day. Called Adam by his name. He refused to answer, cause he wasn't naked. Tell me who's that right? John the Revelator. Who's that right? John the Revelator. Who's that right? John the Revelator wrote the book of the Seven Seas. So I ran the Mesa Marathon, the Arizona Marathon this year. The race begins at the top of a mountain, so you can't just drive there, you have to take a shuttle to get to the top of the race. I had to wake up at 3.30 to make the start time of the race, and I realized, like, I woke up and I wasn't tired. I thought to myself, why is it that I am not looking forward to so many aspects of my day, or most days of my life, which are full of possibility? Whereas when I was running this marathon, everything's laid out, everything's perfect. Why? Because I have a big thing to look forward to today. When the tragedy is that every day of our life has that sense of possibility, like something big could happen, it's just that it's not anchored by an event that you know for sure. But every day has insane possibility. When you are a high frequency person, every day feels effortless. And every day has that sense of like something exciting is happening. Like it's an important day even if it is not anchored by like an event such as a marathon. So that's what I wanted to cover in this video, how to be a high frequency person. And the first idea I want to share is that high frequency feels effortless. The effortless state is something that is described in Greg McEwen's book of the same name. You're completely present, attentive, focused on what's important in the moment. You're able to do what matters most with ease. With that in mind, I would say one of your great responsibilities with every day is to have a protocol that can get you into a high frequency state. And so that's what the rest of this video is going to cover. So principle one, and perhaps one of the most important aspects of being a high vibration person is sobriety plus semen retention. After all these years of practicing NoFap, being on it and being off of it, I just have to admit that when I'm on a at all decently long retention streak, it's almost as if I can think a thought and it begins to unfold. My thought power has a lot more like input on the world. It surprises me every single time because it's a phenomenon that I don't fully understand. I feel all sorts of creative ideas stir up inside me on a retentive streak. And this is only kind of accelerated by sobriety. It's kind of annoying because uh, in like a Minnesota winter or a Canadian winter, the number one habit that people turn to is alcohol. And I'll admit that alcohol even temporarily can rev up your thought power. Back in the day, I would do shots of vodka b by myself. And then I would like send out outreach messages like in my actor days. And it would actually work because like you get freed up a little bit. You think more is possible. And so you just end up kind of taking more risks. It even applies in a creative business sense. That rise is only temporary when you're on any kind of drug. It's only like two hours long and then it comes crashing down afterwards. So really the most amount of potency that you're gonna get from your brain is on sobriety. In fact, I said this to my videographer the other day, but if you're someone whose life is moving in the wrong direction, the number one thing you could do that is almost guaranteed to like reverse things and put them aggressively in the other direction is go 100 days without drinking and 100 days without any kind of sexual release. And in order to make this, this long of a streak work, you are going to need to meditate. You are going to need to do like aggressive amounts of transmutative practices. But any struggle you have, you're not able to make friends in a new city. If you're struggling financially, those financial woes will be set aside. You're guaranteed to make at least an extra like $40,000. And it's just because when you transmute this creative force inside you, really it's the number one thing that accelerates your vibration upwards. Principle Number two, know what you stand for, know what you're all about. For me, a good deal of this is manifested through a vision board that I look at with some frequency. It sounds like a Hallmark card, but doing the right thing is a very high frequency thing to do. One of the reasons that we all admire Batman so much is because he keeps his tenets for living very close to his heart and he doesn't bend from them no matter how much it hurts. Principle three, cardio plus sunlight. I'm one of the few people in like 
the lifting community in my circle who love to run. I actually adore running and I run despite what the other gym bros tell me. I can tell you more than anything, running, cardio, or some alternates to it, like such as doing breath work, it fully raises your vibration. And it's just because cardio oxygenates your brain. I've now only been a runner for about 18 months, but the faster I have gotten with running, the better my clarity of thought has been. Which is to say, the faster I've been able to run, the higher my vibration has become. Running for me is associated with the state of freedom, with plentifulness, with progress. The next principle then is a very obvious one, and it's gratitude. As McEwen writes in his book, Gratitude is a powerful catalytic thing. It starves negative emotions of the oxygen they need to survive. It also generates a positive self-sustaining system wherever and whenever it is applied. When you focus on what you lack, you lose what you have. When you focus on what you have, you get what you lack. In life, stuff happens, but most of the time we'll come to realize that the stresses that come into your life pale in comparison to like what's good. But there's a ton to be happy about and being alive is actually a great thing. Eating food, even if it's bland, nutritious food, it feels delicious. It's like, it feels fantastic. Going to bed at night after a day's work is a source of tremendous happiness. Spending time outside, hanging out with your boys, even going up to a girl, talking to her and getting rejected is exciting. It's exhilarating. To be alive, to have access to books, history, music. There's inspiration all around. There's so much gratitude that I deeply feel for being able to partake in this journey. And it pales in comparison to the negative stuff that happens. The next principle and the last one is that breakthroughs are catalytic. As I said at the start of this video, I was training for a marathon. In fact, the entire reason why I really came to Arizona for the last month was to run and eventually, with some hope, PR on the Mesa Marathon. It was just my luck that this marathon of all of them was like a cold, rainy day in Arizona. I might as well have stayed in Minnesota where I'm from because the race was so wet and cold. But I PR'd my race. My official time was four hours, two minutes, 38 seconds. Literally no one else cares that I ran this thing. Even my closest people, they're kind of like, oh yeah, congrats, but they don't give a fuck. And why should they, right? It's my accomplishment. It's this thing that I needlessly did just for myself. But a breakthrough, no matter how trite, is perhaps like the most joyous thing there is. I've said this repeatedly for the last year. A person should have a breakthrough on the horizon every two or three months. You should have a breakthrough, your next strategic move, always around the corner because it's what deliberately gives your life the story arc. Sure, a lot's gonna happen in the next year, a lot's gonna happen in the next five years that could be really transformational for you, of course. But that timeline is too long to create any meaningful sense of urgency. But if you know you have to do this thing within two to three months, you know you can do it. You fully know you can do it. There is something really catalytic and powerful about setting realistic goals that you can achieve that are still a little bit exciting. So rather than trying to make 100 grand next month, if your current salary is like $3,000 a month, set the ambition of just getting up to like 4K, literally an extra $1,000 a month. And that is going to be very exciting when you achieve that goal. It's what has given my life this amazing sense of adventure, to be always working towards what is actually possible. To respect the realistic possible goals shows the universe that you don't take this for granted, like you're happy with what's possible. And what's possible is very exciting. If you're new to the channel, my name is Nikhil. This channel now features approximately one video per month, video essays like these about how to make progress in your own creative career. If that's something that appeals to you, then consider subscribing. If you wanna connect with me further and kind of see the behind the scenes of how I make these videos or what I'm pursuing in real life, you can follow me on Instagram at nrajapande. That's my full name, Nikhil Raja. And lastly, if you wanna grow your own YouTube channel, or at least understand how the game of YouTube works. I have a coaching program that does just that. It's a very robust community. Every cohort now, I see enormous progress from each one of my students, the people who choose to work with me. Every three days, every time I meet with them, I see enormous progress. But what the program will do definitively, you will become a confident YouTuber. You will feel good about the work you do, and you'll create a foundation to grow a personal brand channel for years and perhaps even decades to come. So if you're curious about that, you can check out the link in the description box. And for those of us who focus on getting our frequency high so that we can do our life's work effortlessly, to us I say, greatness is coming. We'll see you next time.